All right. And thanks to all the primers, by the way. I see you guys in the chat. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two in the series between the Muslim and Beastie Cutie. Spawning in on the north side of the map, playing as the Delhi Sultanate in the color blue, it is Beastie Cutie. And to the south, it is going to be the Muslim playing as the Chinese in red. Two civilizations that are pretty popular on this map, but one of them has a high upside against the other. It is the Delhi versus the Chinese. And we have seen this more and more that if you are playing with a civilization that likes to sit back, like HRE, Chinese, just focus on the eco, the, the Delhi can punish that really well because you will control all three sacred sites and then you're just going to have such a great eco using that that you can snowball a game of Castle Age. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Muslim is going to try to prevent the opponent from capping those sacred sites because one thing is sure, the Muslim can't just sit back and boom on Song Dynasty 2 town centers. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how Beastie plays it. Now, Beastie rarely goes Imperial when he's playing the Delhi, uh, but in recent times, we've seen a game come out from the Viper where he actually looked to get a lot of Scholars. I'm talking, I think I think he got to a, a high of about 18 Scholars in the game, and he heavily invested in his tech, and he went Imperial quite early, about 25 minutes into the game. And I wouldn't be surprised if Beastie Cutie has watched that game or at least heard about that game and said, well, hold on a minute. There's actually potential here for the Delhi in the late game. Because when you think about it, obviously it's going to take some time before those upgrades come through. But when they all come through, well, hold on a minute. Now you've got all your elite upgrades. You've got your elite archers, your elite crossbows, elite horsemen, elite knights, elite spears, elite men at arms. All the elite upgrades are in and they're free. So... All of a sudden, Delhi doesn't look that bad, but obviously you're playing up against China, one of the toughest civs to play in the late game full stop. In fact, arguably, or un unarguably, the best late game civilization there is. Uh, Grenadiers, we have seen them make a resurgence. Uh, so not just in your four versus four games, the Grenadiers are strong in one versus one as well. Incredibly strong units, very difficult to deal with. And with Mangonels being off the table, I don't know how Beastie would deal with that situation. Yeah, that's exactly it. And we have seen some optimized builds towards Grenadiers. So for a long time, as you said, the Grenadiers were a team game thing. So once you played, you know, Mountain Pass and you walled up with 15 layer stone walls, boomed on 15 town centers, you finally get to Ming Dynasty, you finally go for Grenadiers. But now it's actually much more viable in 1v1s with the optimized build orders. So you do have that two town centers Song Dynasty build into straight Ming Dynasty with Imperial, and then you just start spamming out those Grandiers. And one of the impressive things with Grandiers that shouldn't be underestimated is that they don't need a ton of upgrades. It's not like you are teching into Knights or you're teching into Palace Guards where you have to grab so many upgrades for them. They come out of that Archer range almost fully upgraded. Yeah, the, the only real important upgrade to get is Pyrotechnics. And Pyrotechnics is an upgrade that, as China, you are going to have very early in the game anyway. Uh, just simply because it's going to be affecting your Bombards. You know, if you look to go into Hand Cannoneers first, it's going to be affecting those as well. It affects your Nest of Bees. It pretty much affects... Uh, we, we've seen players just go for full gunpowder compositions. And now, speaking of gunpowder, look what we've got down here in the middle of the map for the Muslim. Love it. Great, great move by the Muslim. Uh, especially because Beastie, I think, is unaware of this one. And one thing that the Muslim gains with this is that he knows that Beastie can control at maximum two sacred sites. So the worst case scenario of the Muslim um, being put on the sacred site countdown is not going to be a possibility for Beastie. So that's actually great for the Muslim if he can get this uh, building up. Because this means that the Muslim can sit back a little bit more comfortably knowing that Beastie can't just start the sacred site countdown. Yeah, uh, the, the, it's a great point because that is one of the difficult things because the Muslim typically in this position, he, he's got two options that he can play. Number one, it is an age two style where he looks to go for a fast song dynasty and will mass up Chokunu. You can get out a really decent number of Chokunu and look to apply pressure to the sacred sites. The problem is if you do that, uh, the issue that you're going to have is that castle age timing, which is going to be men at arms, you know, the elephant. And that may, that's very difficult to deal with, especially because you're not going to have a win condition behind that because typically you're going to be on one town center. The other option that you're going to have is to wall up and go for a second town center behind it try and delay sacred sites as much as possible and then move into potential crossbows but we've got ourselves a boar pool right now what is going on the boar trying oh. to come over here he was trying to get the boar over to, to the village under the barbican not going to be having it today unfortunately the boar leashing back towards its starting point but uh yeah beastie cutie at this point in time uh i, I suspect coming into this game that 
you know, if, if, I, if I was a bookmaker right here, I'd be like giving Beastie Cutie like 75% chance to win this game, to win this matchup. This is, I, I feel like this is a very difficult match for China just because of the timing windows that, uh, that uh, Delhi has got. Yeah, I gotta agree with you. This is historically a matchup that the Delhi likes to be in, although the Chinese do have the tools to win this matchup with the supervising and being able to match efficient production. Beastie only has one win and one loss with the Delhi in the entire tournament. Whereas for the Muslim with the Chinese, he's standing at 2-2. Two and two, So 50% win rate with their respective civilizations for both players throughout Golden League. Yeah, so both players really, you know, don't, don't play a lot of these civs, let's just say that much, in Golden League. But uh, when it comes to the ladder, they, there is plenty of it that comes out. But now Beastie Q's reached that second age. It looks like a double blacksmith opening for him, which is pretty standard. That is something that we see most times. Uh, and to me, that, that signals that he might even think about a bit of an extended feudal age play. Uh, maybe going heavy on horsemen could be an option for him. Um, and and then looking to try and move into archers and then get the spears out a little bit later. Uh, but it does look like that is going to be the case. We see a couple of horsemen in queue right now. But second town center for Muslim looking to be a possibility as he continues to be harassed over on this stone mine. Still yet to wall up, but we do see a barracks going to be coming out for him. So he is anticipating that there will be cavalry out today. Yeah, he's probably thinking that, hey, um, the most common way for the Delhi to play this one is going to be horsemen because they want to have mobility, they want to control both of those sacred sites on the flanks. And what is that villager up to here in the middle? Because that's going to be an interesting one to take a look at. There's a villager in the middle coming in for Beastie, running straight towards that Barbican. Yeah, that that villager, you can just tell by the way he's looking. Uh, oh, okay. tell oh, the the boy's going to kill him. The Muslim is no, going to no, aggro no. the boar. He has to. Oh, he's, yeah, he's uh, doing it. <laughs> yeah, get, yeah, get out of here. Get out of here. Look at the villager. The villager. The beast is just like, what, what, what is my villager doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you love it. You just love to see it. Oh, the boar is such a menace. Oh, gosh. I'm not going to make a joke about somebody's mother right now, but you know I'm thinking it. Oh, I mean, that was a nice little move over there for the Muslim. He's going to get one villager pick. Beastie probably just forgot about that villager. He actually doesn't get the villager pick, so Beastie avoids the boar over here. Now some of those scouts are actually heavily damaged. They took some beating from the board, some from the town center, and it looks like the villagers were actually sent out for the tower. Surprising that Beastie sent out the villagers to the middle though as well, because he was aware of that barbican being there. Yeah, so I think what you can do on that central sacred site, uh, you actually send out two scholars to it. Uh, and then they just basically heal each other up. And then if you've got the outpost close enough, you can just garrison one uh, inside the outpost if it gets too low. If, you know, if maybe some units come in or something like that. Uh, but we'll look to see how he plays it because he's got cavalry sitting there nearby. He's intent on grabbing up all three sacred sites. But behind this, we see the second town center for the Muslim has come through. We'll take a look at his macro. This will give us an indication of what his plan is. He's quite heavy on wood. Uh, only a few villages on gold at this point. So it doesn't look like it's going to be heavy chokunu at all. Probably could even just be a, a bit of a feudal stay. Uh, at this point, but we'll have to watch and wait how he plays it out. He's fully walled up with the exception of the front here, but I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got because, as I said, this is a matchup that is difficult. This is a matchup I personally have a lot of trouble with, uh, so we'll have to see how he plays it. Yeah, this is risky for the Muslim over here because, as you pointed out, two scholars can cap that sacred site, or you just send in your scout and horseman to absorb the um, fire from the barbican, and then you cap it. So it's not impossible for Beast to capture that sacred site, and we can see him moving out for the sacred site to the north, to the south, and he still has three scholars buffing his uh, research. So he's going to have five scholars on the battlefield, which allows him to continue researching at a great rate and also go for a very efficient way of capturing those three sacred sites. Looks like he's going to have the one on the left and the right. The question is the one in the middle. And look at that, three scholars coming <laughs> in, all of them towards that sacred site. This puts the Muslim on a timer and it's getting concerning for him because Beastie, I think he's going to start walling off those sacred sites soon. Oh, look at that. That's going to be a bit of a stalemate out there. Yeah, this is where the, the, the scouts really come in handy. Ideally, you'd like to split them up, one on each sacred site, one to the north, one to the south, because that way they're able to challenge that. And just the idea here is that you don't want to deny the sacred site being captured. You're going to, it, it's going to get captured 100%. It's just about delaying that. You're just trying to delay it. You're trying to be annoying. And that's exactly what Demuslim is doing here. So great job of being annoying. Uh, his, uh, his younger siblings would be very impressed. Yeah, it looks like it is going to be the central sacred site being captured as well. And as you see, the scholars are just healing each other. And with that, the three sacred sites will be under the control of Beastie. And the concern for the Muslim is that right now he's sitting at six spearmen. That's the only military unit that he has on the battlefield. He's nowhere close to Castellation, nowhere close to starting to add Jugenu or anything. And if you look at Beastie, 
he's got a ton of food in the bank. So with all three sacred sites under his control, he's going to be in cost ledge in the next two minutes or so. Yeah, but take a look at the Muslim though. He's got plenty of gold in the bank. Upgrades not going absolutely ham at this point. No double broad axe, no specialized pick, but he does have his wheelbarrow. He's got his forest or his, uh, he's got his horticulture in. Uh, but uh, yeah, everything at this point in time for the Muslim is indicating that he's going to be up to castle about the same time as Beastie Cutie. And then th this is where the timing comes through, right? Because everything that Beastie Cutie has done so far is is by the book. It, it took him a little bit of extra time to get those sacred sites up. And that was just simply because of the delay that was coming through from the Muslim. Uh, but now we can actually see down towards the south that the Muslim is going to be attempting to clear out this sacred site. Beastie Cutie not leaving any units down here. And as a result, you can see the scholars marching out in tandem. They are going to be coming out to hold this sacred site and heal up any units that potentially uh, want to tank up against that many spears. But uh, it's a dangerous play. But a little bit of a mistake coming out here from Beastie. Yeah, he has no defense to this Southern Sacred Site aside from that tower. And it looks like it is going to be decap. You see, Beast is going to run circles around this one, trying to keep it alive as the reinforcements are coming in. But he's going to have to abandon this one. He might need to sacrifice the horsemen for this. Oh, oh it's so close. He's, he's got to buy a slither. Look at him. He, he might be it. able to keep it. He's, oh, and the scholars <laughs> get on it. Now that the scholars are on it, the Sacred Site stays. Obviously, the timer is of, is paused, but this is gu guaranteed. You know, he is fine now because the Sacred side is safe what a play by beastie cutie keeping that horseman alive to the very last second disgusting there is one thing it. that's even more disgusting just to give everybody a context of how good these players are beastie also started to construct his landmark while he was doing that that is unbelievable that was immaculate micro on that horseman and think about it in a way that beastie also had time to start building the landmark while he was microing those horsemen to perfection Really, really impressive stuff. Now, th this is where... Okay, so I I've now got my notepad out because up until this point, the theory indicates that Beastie uh, ha has done everything correct, everything by the book. You know, he aged up at the perfect time. He's got the three sacred sites. He's going to be out collecting relics, and I'm sure we'll watch that relic count. You can see it's sitting at zero at the moment for Beastie Cutie, but it is going to be shortly up to five. Uh, he will be looking to capture every single one of these relics out on the map. And I guess the question is, how does the Muslim look to play this? Does he dare even think about going for a fast imperial uh I, I posit that that might actually be a, a viable option i don't know whether it's going to be actually a, a viable option here but he is stacking up resources like a bit of a madman right now yeah it's weird because palace guard's nest of beasts could be a composition that works really well but the question is how is he going to prevent beastie from capping all five of those relics because right now beastie is sitting on three sacred sites the countdown is still going on we're down to eight minutes so if you're going fast imperial here it's gonna be a very dicey and tight timing we're looking at uh, he has gone up with the clock tower and looks like we are seeing some palace guards hit the field. Still pretty big resource bank though. So as you said, it's not impossible we're going to see a fast imp from him. The question is fast imp into what aside from bombards? Because I guess That's that bombards. could be the plan. Yeah, it, it, it's bombard. So the, 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 my theory behind this is the only reason why this works is it, it's against Delhi. The problem is that you have with China is up against those elephants. The elephants are so damn difficult to deal with. And there doesn't seem to be any reasonable response that, that China has got to that, apart from going for Yuan Dynasty spears. But it, it's an expensive thing to do. It's going to take time. We can see he has spent his gold now, though. So it's going to be a nest of bees. He's also getting veteran spearmen upgrade. I think it looks like he's decided that it's time to go. Uh, and, uh, and by go, it means that he is going to be thinking a bit more about a castle age play here instead. He kind of has to go at this point because like if he wants to get into Imperial, that's going to take at least a minute more than starting to add Bombards. He would be down to like four or five minutes on the timer. And if anything goes wrong in that area, he's out of this game and he would be down two games. Elephants are now hitting the field over here, though. Not a lot of crossbows on the battlefield for Beastie. Oh, I love this move. He's going to wall <laughs> off the south and he's probably going to try to do the same thing on the north. And one thing that this gives him is that he can limit his focus towards that central area. And I would think he will try to just push that Barbican and just focus all that fighting on that central sacred site. But now we actually see a couple of palace guards in the north. It's going to be more than enough to be able to contest this sacred site. We don't see any units in the vicinity as the sacred site goes up past 50%. We'll head back to the sacred site because there are units moving out towards it right now. Beastie Cutie looking to contest it over towards that north side. We can see that the horsemen uh, are, are rounding their way. In fact, it's not horsemen. It's actually going to be archers looking to try and dive onto the sacred site. <laughs> palace guards once again. Beastie Cutie able to hold the sacred site and the timer keeps ticking. 
Oh man, once again, the timings are just perfect over here. And the Muslim really tried his best. You could see that he was trying to block the archers from entering that sacred site, but that's not gonna be a thing. And we're down to 6.30 and it's getting very close to that dangerous territory because obviously behind this one, Beastie is also getting a, a ton of gold from this one. Castle being dropped in the middle, though that's a great move from the Muslim. We have seen that yesterday, I do believe, in uh, the Marine Lord Puppy Paw series, where the way that you contest that sacred site is dropping that very powerful Chinese castle right next to it, and then that is going to help you with firepower to try and contest that, but there's the counter castle coming in from Beastie in the middle. Yeah, so we got double castles coming up now in the center of the map. Uh, so you would expect trebuchets are going to be out sooner rather than later. Uh, but we can see Nesta B's still in queue at the moment for Demuslim. He's going to be looking to step his foot onto this sacred site as the villager on the backside of that keep looks to do a little bit of a dance. I'm not sure if you guys saw that. It was wiggling its way, doing a little bit of a twerk. But now that Nesta B is firing off towards the battle in the middle. And this is what's so difficult to deal with. The men at arms together with that Delhi, uh, that Delhi elephant. That is just really what sets the pace of the game here. Castle is incomplete yet for Beast. He's just now finishing it up and it looks like we're gonna have a decap attempt over here by the Muslim, but that's not gonna work out in the long run. We will probably see some spring golden placements coming on that castle. The Muslim actually may have found an angle, but the elephant with its dive is going to pick off most of those uh, palace guards. So this sacred site once again remains under control of Beastie. Countdown still going on down to 550 and it's getting very dangerous here for the Muslim. This is, the, this is the hard part right now for, for the Muslim on China uh, because you've got nothing that can really crack through these elephants just because of the healing that comes out from the scholars. So if you have a bombard, the bombard's going to be able to take out the scholar and can one-shot the scholar uh, so it doesn't have to worry about them and then it's free to take out those elephants. And he'd be in a great position here if he was in Imperial. Obviously, he's not, so it is a different case for him. He's got those nest of bees out. Uh, he's also got crossbows, but you've got to remember, in the mix here, it's not real. they're not really doing a lot. I feel like a Fast Imperial may, may have actually worked here as long as he's got that keep down. He's got that foothold on this sacred site and that really gives him a great base of operations. But now down to five minutes to go for that sacred site timer. So he's done a great job of just extending out the game a little bit longer, buying himself time because China ideally wants to get online. About the 25 minute mark is typically when it happens. But now we can see Beastie Cutie going to be looking a quick wall up all of these. But now all of a sudden we've got the, the palace guards trying to break through the first wall segment. We can see that they're actually sieging it down. This is one of the recent changes that came through for Age of Empires 4 in the patch. Beastie Cutie going to be walking away from it though, unfortunately going to be yeah, going to be coming up empty handed it seems. Yeah, that is a great change because now it's much more difficult to just go for those stonewall quick walls, but as you could see Beastie could still pull this off because the firepower or the damage output from those uh, palace guards was just insufficient and now the problem for the Muslim is that going for a fast team now is too late. He is relatively close to potentially imping here but if he decides to do so he's gonna have like two and a half minutes at best left to try and contest these sacred sites and it's very very dicey so if he ever wants to go for an imperial it is right now if, if yeah, he delays it even more it's it's not gonna be a possibility this is where it starts to get hard as well because Beastie's going to continue adding in more trebuchets. Uh, we, we don't actually see any trebuchets coming through from Beastie at, at this point. I, I, I take that back. Uh, instead, just going for full springles. Uh, but uh, one of the difficult things that you can have is obviously if your enemy starts pushing up towards those double-digit numbers of springles, it's going to be very hard to contest them, uh, even with, with bombards. But now looking to try and contest the sacred site in the center, we see the elephants moving out, looking to try and dish out some damage. Men at Arms going to be on the front line, preventing that sacred site, site from uh, ticking down any further. And Beastie Cutie once again secures it up. And the spring are now opening up against the nest of bees out there. The elephants will soak up the firepower of the castle. And you see two of the nest of bees going down over here. Looks like one of the spring will be traded off by the castle. But this is a great fight once again by Beastie. He's going to recap the sacred site. We're down to 330. And as you said, not a single trebuchet right now by Beastie. The only person adding trebuchets is, is the Muslim. But he's yet to take down that castle from Beastie. The right hand side has been stonewalled in. The left hand side does have a defensive castle. You gotta wonder where exactly the Muslim can contest the sacred sites because the right hand side seems impossible. His best bet might actually be the left side. Yeah, I still feel like it's the center, but I think he, he needs to go fast castle, or he needs to go imperial, he needs to go right now, and he needs to uh, he needs to actually empower or supervise a siege workshop. So don't actually do it from your uh, clock tower. It's going to be too slow coming out of that. you just got to do it and then get some bombards out. He's got enough resources right now uh, where he could start thinking about some serious numbers of bombards, but it looks like attention going to be drawn towards this south sacred site. You mentioned it earlier, but he's got to be careful because this is quite an open position. Uh, we've seen earlier numbers for the... Uh, 
for the the elephant. But a, a keep does get dropped down, so Demulsum definitely looking to potentially open up this position. And now Trebuchet is going to be rolling down here. We can see the Springwoods coming in for a bit of a kiss. More units. Trebuchet's up on the north side. BCQD finally with the Trebuchet's out himself here. And this sacred site going to be under threat. Nesta B's continuing to fire down. You can see villagers dead on the other side of the wall. Unfortunately, those villagers did lose their life. And now it looks like Beastie Cutie might be in a bit of trouble. He's trying to make his, his way around, but that keep is definitely going to be keeping him out. So now the question is, is Beastie going to be able to hold as he looks to try and put down some damage in the middle of the map? The Muslim's actually in a very good position. If he takes this sacred site, all of a sudden the tables turn. And I think Beastie Q might be in trouble. Yeah, Beastie is in trouble over here. And I love that castle spot for the Muslim to the north of this location because that is cutting off Beastie's reinforcements. Beastie can't approach this sacred side with his army. And in the middle, Beastie, I think he was trying to contest that castle, might actually be able to finish this one off over here because it looks like we don't have boiling oil finished just yet. But what's the price of that for Beastie? It is losing the sacred side on the right side. If you look at the resource bank of the Muslim, he's not far away from Imperial. His army is looking very healthy. In fact, it's 195 population against 119 with the Muslim having the option to go up to Imperial and with that resource bank, Ming Dynasty is not far away either. The Muslim is now putting on cruise control. The window is shrinking rapidly here for Beastly. Yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm starting to get very concerned for Beastie. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see good game getting called after this battle because Beastie Cutie is going to be in a world of hurt. We can see that the, the crossbows are beginning to move forward. The elephants are very short in number. There's only one of these bad boys out at the moment. And now the Springwood's going to be looked at getting taken out. You can see the palace guards continuing to move forward. Crossbows marching up, trying to do some damage, trying to dish out some damage. But unfortunately, it looks like that elephant going to be pretty tanky on the backside. But now we've got Imperial coming through from the Muslim and all of a sudden the table's really start turning. We talked about it earlier in this game. The chance of winning as China up against the Delhi is very, very small, but still the Muslim finds a way. We talked about the fact that the Muslim loves the Chinese on this map and we see his prowess coming into play. He knows exactly what he needed to do. He bought himself enough time up against three relics, up against or rather five relics, three sacred sites. That is 950 gold passive every single minute that is coming in for Beastie Cutie. And yet still he overcomes. Still he finds a way. The timings were perfect over here for the Muslim. He broke out just when he needed and that castle placement to help facilitate the decap was spectacular. Now it's Imperial Age over here for the Muslim. The Bombards will hit the field. Obviously Chinese Bombards, they will do really well against the Spring Olds as well. Beast doesn't want to give up on this one, but realistically he's got 66 villagers as opposed to 126. And you get the feel that we are entering a very similar scenario than what we had in the previous game where the role was being reversed. Yeah, it definitely feels like that. Now, now all of a sudden you see the Muslim. I think he's in a great spot. He's got the nest of bees back here. You can see he's going to be getting that uh, that pyrotechnics upgrade uh, through shortly as well. Uh, but he's getting a whole bunch of other upgrades. Elite crossbowmen going to be coming through. Reload drills also going to be coming through for him. So he is looking to try and maximize the effectiveness of his bombards. He's got three trebuchets out, but at this point it's going to be all about the bombards. Yeah, it's going to be all about the bombards, obviously. We'll have to see if he is deciding to go early on a Ming Dynasty, try to go for Grand Ears, or just try to leverage that Imperial Age timing that he has. Beastie notably still has five relics and two sacred sites though, and as you pointed out, with sufficient amount of scholars, grabbing those Imperial Age technologies for the Delhi is not impossible. Now, Beastie is still in a pretty difficult spot right now, but with the amount of relics and the trickle of gold coming from the sacred site, this is not necessarily a game over yet for Beastie. He still has a slim chance here. But remember what we talked about earlier. If you are playing as Delhi, you don't want to make it to the late game typically because, well, Delhi doesn't really have much of a late game. Now, if you spoke to Viper, he might disagree with you. Uh, but every other player seems to very rarely go Imperial with the Delhi. And it looks like it might be the case here for Beastie Cutie. He's going to be pushing out towards this eastern flank. There's a keep that's going up. Village is going to get taken out. This is Chinese villagers, though, so they're going to be working overtime to get that bad boy up. And it looks like it might indeed go up despite the elephants just trying their best to take it out. You can see it's at about half health. It manages to get up. And with that, supporting fire is added. And all of a sudden, the Muslim once again going to be looking to push down this front here of his opponent, Beastie Cutie, starting to look like he really might be in some trouble. He's going to be in trouble because the Bombards are now hitting the field, taking down all the Springles. The castle is gone. And with that, Beastie's game number two is as well. The Muslim evens it out 1-1 with a spectacular Chinese show over here on Hillandale. I am incredibly impressed. I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch this. I'm going to study this game because the Muslim played that perfectly. I think the biggest thing to take away from this was the fact that he was able to stay on top of those sacred sites and just delay the timer because as long as you're standing on those sacred sites and you've got your foot on first, the timer stops. Now that sucks because when, when you're in game, you don't get to see that. 
you, you you just get to see the fact that there's three sacred sites that are taken, that the timer is is paused, but it doesn't really, it, it's not shown to you in a meaningful way. And as a result, you don't really get that. But uh, Beastie Cutie, unfortunate for him, uh, going to be losing that game. And we'll be moving on to game number three. List, did you see that Villager Graph, Ludicor? That was ludicrous. Yeah, that was a ludicrous Villager Graph. I mean, it is such a weird game out there. I mean, the Muslim... What, no, wait, that, that has to be, that's the military count. That's not the villager count yep. we're looking at, that's the military the, count. I'm actually curious at that villager count. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, are we able to go back towards that villager count? Ooh. We'll take a look back. There, there you go. Yeah, you can see it. Just absolute beauty coming in. So he went for a fast Song Dynasty into two town center. Often you see it go the other way, the two town centers into Song Dynasty. Uh, but I love this play from the Muslim. It was absolutely beautiful. Immaculate stuff. Yeah, really well played out there. And Beastie also played a spectacular game. I mean, just think about these moves to keep those sacred sites alive. He saved two of those sacred sites in the last second. It was an absolute beauty as well from him. But 